Summoners, beware. There's no turning back now. Welcome to Jerry's Pentakill Countdown. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I really need to practice my swing. It's all in the wrists. Wait, wait, wait! Oh, crap. Oh, Ouch! You big lummox, the fairway is that way! Adam Arrington, ladies and gentlemen, the talented Riot voice actor. Now, if you haven't noticed, this series has become a top five countdown. I'm pushing for bigger and better things. Even though it's harder to find the most entertaining pentas, I will do my best to deliver the best of what you wonderful people submit. The clip we're looking at belongs to Heart Defender, who's in the top lane right now. And we're going to see a chase with Volley Flash over the wall near the turret. Not a good place for the purple team to engage. A flip snare and some damage, but both teams are backing off with Amumu coming in, making this a 4v5. Amumu's advancing, seeing an opportunity. He catches three with his team immediately jumping into the clusterfuck with massive damage, but Corky Blanks from behind with Valkyrie, the perfect time rocketing for the double kill and the Gatling gun finishing the quick turnaround for the Insta Pentakill from what looked like an easy fight for the purple team with Eddie Carey doing his job at the end to clean up instead of being the designated tank. In fourth place is Metric playing as Shaco. Akali uses her pull to invade the bush with her team, but Purple knows that they are there, and a hopeful free Willy Bait lands on Akali with a collateral damage and an attempt by Varus to burst that AP carry down. Shaco shifts the monkey ult and heads straight into enemy lines. Seeing Blue is only engaging in mid with a burst barrage and bullet time combo. The creepy clown isn't stopping and follows the would-be assassin to protect Varus, getting his first kill, then switching right to the low gameplay for the double, and the blue team positioning themselves in a very bad situation, going into the bush one at a time. Wukong reinforces, but it's too late. The pattern has begun, and it will not do its help, but the Clown Clone is doing some serious work as well. Meeting misfortune on the other side, the Clown Clone explodes, but now before getting a few extra hits, taking her out for the quad, and Soraka is all that's left dead. Scion heads in having the ward, he catches her with Hextech, Shaco slows again, but she flashes, followed by Scion stun. He deceives and waits to hit her from behind with three final auto attacks for the strategic and well played Quintessimation. Coming in in the bronze, third medal place, we have Mr. Kearney playing as Kogma on the purple team. In this mid lane team fight, we see both teams are poking at each other, having an equal amount of harass with two cogs, and both mages counterattack with Lee Sin and Blitzcrank leaving the fight area. Blue team is analyzing the next step, whether or not to engage. Nidalee is the only one hit by the laser, so engaging is possible for Blue with that out of the equation. Lux took the shockwave, but Rennington engages for with a dash into Oriana for good damage, trying to burst her, but is stunned by Riven instead and gets bursted down himself before his ult took full effect, and the blue team is winning the fight, zeroing in on Kogma, who focused Focused Oriana grabbing kill number one. Now being chased by four, he heads in for the bush and counter is hitting three with very fast clicking, grabbing the double on the flashing cougar. The monk and robot finally join the fight, doing extra damage, helping Cog survive long enough to finish his combo up on Renekton for the pentakill, turning the fight around with a devastating bush bait. The silver medal of this episode goes to a very unique clip, one that I've never seen before. With Zindel playing as Bane, and she's gonna join the fight and disconnect right afterwards. You'll see grabbing the inhibitor. This is looking very bad for Blue with MF ulting, not hitting many minions. She's gonna get stopped by Shen's taunt. Bane Bane ulted, tumbles into the fight, attacking this fortune who flashes to the fountain, but starts off the count for Bane, who is now sitting in the same spot, becoming a supercharged, overpowered turret that heals itself. She starts focusing minions, that being a telltale sign of a DC right there. She is still going, and now it's all up to Santa Claus what happens next here, with Nautilus giving up the triple kill. Bane is hitting Yorick face, taking an extreme amount of damage. With BT fully stacked, she's being focused by Hammer and his rockets, but he's throwing everything he's got at her, but she's not dying, dropping down to 1 HP, not once, but twice. And DC Bane finishes off the Heimer, who was eating, sitting in the fountain, healing, but it was no match for the retard strength of DC Bane. Breaking the mana she annihilates getting the most unique pentakill thus far but she wouldn't find out for another few minutes after his friend told him what a boss he was while he was not playing and coming into the glorious gold medal first place slot is a very intense and skillful fight featuring a rational noob on team fresh pro playing as well having ga with our shirelli engager that is quickly spiraling down and turn sour having now by focus rides with unstoppable force followed by the hallow of Loch Ness monster fresh pro is out of all that damage now being a 2v5 fight Sins is now teleporting in to help his team out, but will it be in time for Ez? He's taking focus now, and a dazzle Cho will zone Ez out, silencing him while his team is being harassed by the mega tank and damage dealing chemist. Ezreal is not retreating, for he's still in it to win it, poking away, allowing his tank to maximize his effectiveness as Purple Team turns all their focus to Singe and Alistar, leaving only GA Cho to deal with the AD carry. Alistar flashes away, Ezreal dashes to snipe out Graves, while Cho retreated and continues to kite with the red buff, and many mystic shots forcing the enemy GN, sniping out Tark, who is on the chase with Oriana for Singe, but she is caught in the adhesive, trapping her in it sights, jumping over the rupture just in time, and into Ori, making sure she does not get out alive or shield herself again. Malphite thinking that he can do something, gets into Mystic Shot Range and regrets his decision right afterwards, letting Ez get the quad combo, and Cho is stopped by the Alistar who flashed away, and he gets knocked in flung, but retreats to the bush, but it's too late. A final rupture attempt on the cow, but Ez ships himself with the last auto attack into the Hall of Pentakillers, turning this initially terrible engagement into a work of art, showing 80 carries everywhere, that kiting is a skill, and a skill that pays off. Yeah.
Hey there, sexy! Don't go yet, because this is a segment where I ask you a question and show you all the funniest, weirdest, and most interesting comments that spawned from my previously asked questions. Today's question is, if you could travel to the past to give your past self a piece of advice, what would it be? Go ahead and leave your creative answers in the comment section down below! Last week's question was, what was the most dangerous thing you've ever done? So let's take a look at what all you decent and kind-hearted people out there had to say for yourself. Eee, you're such a badass! Beauty mate, they am shocking fisted waters. You got any flakes off them and grill them on the bobby? I seriously feel like I'm the only one who can't get Chrome to work properly. Irreversible nightmares. <laughs> I bet she put the slap in the bitch slap she gave you, boy. And your name is Expert Man? Man, you put the you're in failure, as in, you're the failure. If you would be so kind as to check out these other videos, I'd greatly appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and click the like button if you enjoyed what you saw, and keep on sending in your pentakills. More info below. My name is Jerry. Swoosh!